Hey there, welcome to Light Chatting with the Prim Reviews, and today we're chatting about the AMC series Interview with the Vampire, Season 2, Episode 2. Do you know what it means to be loved by death? This week's episode focuses a little less on Claudia's diaries and more on Louis and Armand's perspectives. I gave Season 1's music a little bit of crap, but this season so far they've been doing pretty good. I've been liking it. I especially love the jazzy horns that they had at the opening of this episode, so I hope they keep that good music up also i've been going down the rabbit hole of listening to interviews of the cast and stuff and delaney's voice is so different from her claudia voice and i was like man delaney is really acting acting like she has changed up her voice and everything to a point where it really didn't even sound like her normal speaking voice so she's doing a phenomenal job as claudia so anyway let's go ahead and get into some spoilers for this week's episode so spoiler alert spoiler alert let's start with armand and louis in present day dubai Armand is a walking red flag to me. He is doing so much talking for Louis. There have been a couple of times where Louis is trying to explain something or give his perspective on something and Armand is just jumping in and giving his little two cents. Like Daniel asked Louis what Paris meant to him and Armand's like, Paris meant, and I'm like, nobody asked you Armand, hush. And there was another time where Armand just came out the woodwork telling Daniel that Louis was chasing the wrong kind of love before Louis could even get his words out. Which Louis agreed with him that Louis was chasing the wrong kind of love. But calm down, Armand. Why do you feel the need to interject when it's supposed to be Louis' turn to talk? And Daniel basically calls them out on this. And their excuse is, oh, well, we've been together for 77 years, so it's bound to happen. Low-key, I feel like Armand is really insecure about his relationship with Louis. Or he just wants to control and dominate Louis so bad that it makes him act crazy or something. I don't know. I feel like something's off with Armand. Because not only have they been together 77 years which is great okay cool but he makes these little digs at Lestat that are really unnecessary because he immediately says that they've been together 77 years that's 47 years longer than Louis was with Lestat and it's like why are you comparing yourself to Lestat so hard it's very strange I'm jumping ahead just a tiny bit but he also makes a comment later that when he first met Louis that he told him that he would never hurt him and then he throws in and I never have and I feel like that was another dig at Lestat. I don't know. I don't know. I have my good eye on Armand. It's like he's trying so hard to not lose Louis' love. I don't know. I'm probably reaching. But my man Daniel is not letting that phase him. He is not buying what they are selling one bit. And because Daniel isn't buying it, they start to try and play little mind games with him, trying to get him to revert back to that young boy back in San Francisco. And I'm like, I don't even understand why that's necessary for them to want him to revert back to the kid that they met back in San Francisco that was high and all that kind of stuff. Like, they're supposed to be just there for the interview. So why are they so bothered by Daniel and his questions if they've been together 77 years? and they have this unbreakable bond and I don't know something mm, something's a little off is all I'm saying I don't I don't know what it is yet but I feel like something is off so they play these little mind games with Daniel like I was mentioning and the first couple of times Daniel was able to fend it off like I see through your mess I'm not bothered I know I wasn't crap as a husband as a father whatever whatever you can say and do whatever you want to try and throw me off but I've been past it already Daniel makes a crack about something that I'll talk about later and to get back at Daniel for making that wise crack to Louis they start this kind of like back and forth good cop bad cop between Louis and Armand towards Daniel and that's what actually kind of breaks Daniel down and I was really surprised that that's what did it for him because he was doing good you know fending them off slapping them in the face and you know all kinds of stuff like last season not this season but Daniel's been pretty much holding his own this whole time but this time when they bring up his first wife Alice and how he tried so hard to like get the perfect setting and everything to propose to her and she turned him down and Daniel proposed to her in Paris that's what kind of did it for him like that kind of got his hand shaking kind of like flared up his Parkinson's a little bit and he basically was just kind of lost for a moment and I was just like wow I'm surprised that they got him like that I don't know I just I feel like it was a little bit too easy but then again you don't know how people process their pain and trauma from past situations or whatever so I'm sure that was kind of hard for him to get rejected from his now ex-wife and then on top of that not only did they bring up the fact that he was rejected some kind of way Armand was like 
getting into his head or something and bringing up how when he was in middle school he got in trouble for bringing his dad's playboys to school and the good cop came in as where it's like Louis is the one that brings up how Alice rejected him but then Armand is like but I'm sure she just did that because she was unsure trying to kind of make Daniel feel a little bit better and then that's when it goes back to Louis and he's like well we can see what she thinks about you right now and I don't know I'm just like why are they playing these little games with him I know Daniel can be a lot and he asks some prying questions and he's a little bit too journalistic sometimes but that's what they wanted they called him I feel like they're missing that fact that they're the ones that sent him the tapes and flew him out to Dubai they're acting like Daniel's the one beating down their door to get the interview. I don't know. I ain't like it. It was also kind of weird for me too listening to Louis tell Daniel about how he felt happy when he thinks about Paris aside from certain events. And I'm like, I know he is not talking about Claudia. He better not be talking about Claudia being the certain events. Because we all know if we've seen the movies, like I haven't read the books yet. I'm still working on the first one. But he better not be talking about Claudia being the certain event. Because that's not just a certain event. That's a big event. So I'm hoping what happens to her doesn't actually happen in Paris. Hopefully that happens somewhere else. And he's talking about something else. Because if he's talking about aside from certain events in Paris and it's her, that's going to seal the deal with Louis being trash for me like I'm already not here for Louis anyway but I really ain't gonna be here for Louis if that's the case another major red flag that came up for me is when Armand said that he enjoyed draining people for sport that sounds like Lestat to me and when Lestat said it Louis was all kinds of salty but somehow when Armand does it they get the last 77 years together so let's go on to Claudia and Louis before Claudia and Louis meet up with the coven they're you know living their life like it's golden in Paris they've been there about five months they're kind of getting into their routine Louis has taken up photography and he seems to be really excited and really happy with the way things are going in Paris he enjoys the simple life the easy life kind of blending in not making a ruckus with human life and all of that he likes to go for the easy kills and even when he does kill a person he only does it like every other day but Claudia Claudia is like on some extravagant stuff she likes going for the hard kills she likes getting in there and getting reckless she's basically like Lestat in the books it basically says if there's two vampires or more together there's one that's always going to be more dominant is what they were saying in the books I haven't gotten all the way through the first book yet but so far from what I've been reading that's what they said right so clearly Louis is not the dominant he was subservient to Lestat and now it sounds like he's subservient to Claudia even though she's his junior and this kind of thought that I'm having on this, you know, whole one being dominant, one being subservient comes up a couple of times in my mind in this episode because not only does it seem like he's subservient to Claudia, Claudia asks Louis, who are you apart from everyone else? Apart from her, apart from Lestat, who is Louis? And Daniel, you know, he's like, yeah, that's a good question that Claudia asked. And I'm like, well, is it? Because I really feel like Louis knows who he wants to be. He might not have gotten there yet, but he has has aspirations from even back starting in season one that he wanted to keep up appearances he wanted to not eat people he wanted to try and eat cats and dogs or um, the very worst among them that's always been Louis from the jump even when he ate his first person with the tractor salesman he was pretty much done with it from then he didn't want to do that no more and so to me it seems like he's always known what he wanted to be he wanted to be a vampire that wasn't out there just killing indiscriminately he wanted to save her life even in the book it was the same way Louis wanted to be a vampire that didn't take life for granted so that's to me who Louis always has been the problem comes in that he's a people pleaser he's always been a people pleaser when he tried to go to the brothel even though he didn't like girls he sent up there trying to keep up appearances when he trying to go see his family and bring presents and stuff he trying to keep up appearances instead of just being a vampire like he's always been a people pleaser and that has been the part that messes him up so he knows who he wants to be but he's trying to fit what he wants to be into all the surrounding circumstances that don't actually align with what he is because he's a vampire trying to still live like a human and the two don't mix and I remember back in season one where Lestat was just like embrace who you are you're a killer Louis or something like that and so Louis always wanted to try and live his best life the way he wanted to do it but he constantly was getting peer pressure to live a different kind of way 
So anyway, Louis ends up going to Lestat's old bank because he wants to see if Lestat has been taking out any money or anything like that to kind of prove to him in his mind that yes, Lestat is dead or well, somebody's withdrawing money from his account so he's not dead. Just so he can have some peace of mind because like we talked about last episode, he's continually having visions of Lestat in his mind. When Louis gets to the bank, Lestat hasn't made any withdrawals, but the banker or whoever he is does give Louis a box that Lestat left for Louis a long time ago. And in the box is like the most heartfelt letter. Lestat, okay. Last season, I kept saying, I don't believe Lestat. I do not believe him. But after this letter, I'm just like, all right, I might believe him a tiny bit. Because he can still be a master manipulator and be trying to manipulate Louis from beyond the grave or something like that. But I doubt it. But I, mm, I'm i still going to reserve the right to call him a liar later on, even though this was mad cute. The best part of the letter... <laughs> uh, brought a little tear to my eye he's like a veil will now forever separate our union but it is a thin veil and i am always on the other side face pressed up against your longing that is so sweet i said how he gonna not really love louis and write something so sweet like that knowing that the only time louis would read that letter is if lestat was no more so it's just like oh lestat basically left the beyond the grave love letter to louis and what did louis do for lestat slid it you know what anyway Way. y'all i knew not to trust lestat before i could even finish editing this video good i'm sitting here thinking like wait a minute he had antoinette antoinette was probably telling him obviously that they were planning to kill him and so he probably wrote that letter to yeah get him from beyond the grave i do not trust him let's talk about last but not least the coven that Armand is in charge of, Armand and Louise little meet cute back in 1945. So basically, Louise a creep. He's in the park, kind of like in season one where Lestat brings Claudia to Lover's Lane. But this is just Louis as a grown man watching people in the park. Mad creepy Louis. Do better. The whole coven of Armand's has been kind of salty with Louis and Claudia because they didn't check in with the coven when they came into town. So the whole coven is like in an upper or like who these new americans over here not checking in and telling us they in our neighborhood so armand to appease his coven so that they don't go off the chain and like slaughter claudia and louis armand meets louis in the park and gives him his card and says come to our theater basically you're most welcome i'm not gonna hurt you all that good stuff from the moment that armand walks up louis clocks that the lights are kind of flickering as he walks through to meet him and like louis can apparently feel his ancient power I'm like, all right, calm down. So after Louis meets Armand in the park, he runs back home to Claudia and she's checking out herself in this dress that she had some Nazi lady make for her. Or at least I assume that she was a Nazi because the guy across the street was like, don't mess with her. She, you know, she wanted him. So I assume that must mean she was a Nazi or at least a Nazi sympathizer. So she's trying on her dress and she, as soon as she hears Louis's voice, she is rolling her eyes. She is so over Louis. Claudia, I'm pretty sure if she could, Claudia would just leave louis and be by herself because she looks 14 well she don't really look 14 to me but she apparently is supposed to look 14 so she can't really be out there by herself i feel like if she was turned while she was older she would have been left louis so the next night they go to armand's theater that scene went on way too long y'all it was a good probably 10 11 minutes of them just acting out the theater scene or whatever that was just too much for me i was like i don't know i mean i like the theater but apparently not i don't know i haven't been to that many theatrical performances so maybe Maybe I don't like theater. Am I learning something new about myself? I don't know. I guess. I was over it. That went on way too long for me. But it was necessary for them to have it that long because every time the camera panned to Claudia and the audience watching the vampires do their thing on stage, she is elated. She is just smiling ear to ear, showing all of her teeth. And they pan over to Louis and he is in disgust like pretty much the entire time i don't think i saw him smile once but claudia's over there smiling and cheesing and having a great time she literally gives them a standing ovation while louis is just like what did i just watch what is this foolishness i'm ready to go so basically the performance is the, the vampires acting out all these weird skits in all the skits end in death and the final skit even though at the beginning they tell 
the audience everything that you see here is real blah 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 right so at the final skit they suck this woman's blood and she's out of there but the people in the audience who are just you know ordinary civilians they ain't vampires or whatever most of them some of them are vampire enthusiasts even though they might not know that it's real they just sit there like what did i just witness and kind of clap a little bit because they don't realize that they literally just took a girl's life on stage and again claudia ate it up she was feeling it and that's why i think again louis knows who he wants to be he's sitting there in the audience going along with it because again he's observant he goes along to get along all of that good stuff but he's not enjoying it like claudia is enjoying it he knows that that's not the type of vampire that he wants to be i will say too on top of them having to have that theater scene be so long they had to give santiago time to do his thing because my man was working magic on that stage it was too long for me but he was still putting in work i believed him as a vampire because he was a vampire in the show in the play when santiago comes in to start the performance the lights are flickering kind of like when armand walked through the park and so i'm wondering like was that santiago that was making the lights flicker because during the play they did a whole lot of like cheap theatricals of like spraying fake blood and stuff like that and they put a rope on santiago to let him fly even though he could clearly fly on his own so i'm thinking like along with him being able to fly even though he had the rope i'm wondering if he was making the lights flicker like that in the house of the theater also so after the play louis and claudia go backstage to meet up with armand and his coven and the performers and everything armand is doing most of the talking because he's supposed to be the leader and then out of nowhere santiago steps up and is like y'all been here five months and ain't checked in what's up so i was kind of like wait a minute i thought armand was the leader how he coming up in here all big and bad talking about what's up because again there's always a dominant and a subservient one so i was thinking armand was supposed to be the dominant one but maybe it's santiago i don't know but just because one is more dominant than the other doesn't mean that the other one that isn't as dominant can't speak and it's like 14 of them anyway so i don't know maybe armand's dominant over this group and santiago's dominant over that group but then again like a pride alliance you can't have two males in there they would child i'm thinking way too deep into this that also has me kind of thinking is that the real reason claudia wanted to kill lestat because she also mentioned that lestat's maker probably made lestat a slave to him and she doesn't want to be that way so i'm thinking maybe claudia became too much into her own and now there's two dominants lestat and claudia so one of them gotta go i don't know i'm just thinking out loud Claudia kind of peeps that Lestat's picture is on the wall. So when Santiago asks Claudia and Louis, who made you? She's like, Bruce, who's that guy on the wall? Oh, that's Lestat. I don't know him. So it comes out that Lestat is basically a co-founder of this coven, this theater group. And this part had me cracking up because it also comes out that Armand actually had like a little fling with Lestat way, way, way back in the day. And Daniel puts on the little soap opera music and is like, this is just like a telenovela. And Juan looked up at the painting and saw that Teresa's dead husband was Roberto. He had eloped with his enemy's widow. So after meeting the coven in Paris, Claudia is overjoyed. Like she wants to go back. She is ecstatic. She found what she has been looking for. Vampires that aren't the worst. However, Louis is nervous. He's like, yo, if they find out that we killed Lestat and Lestat has a picture hanging up on the wall in their coven, that's going to be bad news for us. And she's like, just block off your mind, weak self. She's feeling pride of being around vampires who are doing their thing, no apologies. And she's asking Louis, don't you feel pride? And he says, no, I don't feel no pride. She's like, yeah, you do. And I'm just like, this is what I'm talking about. Louis knows who he is or what he wants to be. Everybody just keeps not letting him be that. And it's like, if he said no, why it can't just be no? The man don't feel pride, he don't feel pride. Anyway, Louis tries to tell Claudia, do not go back. It feels like bad bad news and what she want to do she want to go back so apparently they have been going back every day for the past month and the coven takes louis and claudia on a motorcycle ride to some mansion where rich people are throwing a party and it's like 22 people inside the party 
So all the coven ran inside the house to eat up some people. And Claudia's like, you coming, Louis? And Louis's like, nah, I'm gonna chill here with Armand, basically. And Claudia gives him that look like, okay, get yours. So when Claudia goes inside, Louis and Armand are the only two left outside while everybody else is carnage. Louis and Armand start flirting, but Armand has to let Louis know, hey, bro, your slip is showing. You're not blocking your mind well enough. You kind of tensed up when the name Lestat was said. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but the coven, if they find out something crazy, you're going to have trouble on your hands. And Armand also lets him know that even though he's playing dumb about not knowing who Lestat is, he needs to not go back to the bank that Lestat used to go to because that's a bad look. I saw a spoiler on X for an upcoming episode, so check the timestamp if you don't want to hear this real quick spoiler, but... I was thinking when I was listening to this exchange between Louis and Armand, what if Armand is actually Nikki from back in the day, seeing as how Armand already admitted to Daniel that they used to have a thing going on. So is Armand actually Nikki? But then I heard on X that no, Nikki is supposed to be coming up in another episode. So we are going to get the actual Nikki, which isn't Armand. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm off base with that. So at least we are going to get the actual vampire Nikki in the show. And Lestat wasn't lying because, you know, I was giving him a good side eye on that too. So meanwhile, inside the mansion, Claudia is going buck wild. She is going ham. She eating people and going crazy. When she runs out from eating everybody or helping everybody eat everybody, she pretty much wants to join their coven. Like she loves them. She loves everything. And she's down for whatever. She has smiled more in the month that she's been around that coven than she did the entire time that she was with Lestat and Louis. So that's saying a whole lot. She loved them, but how much are they going to love her? So now that they've eaten everybody in the mansion, they set the mansion on fire, and Louis is just in utter disgust. It is total night and day. Claudia is living the dream, and Louis is in a nightmare. And what's crazy is somebody like bumps him or something, whooping and cheering or whatever, and he looks over to them and smiles, and then he looks back straight and just disgust all over his face. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, Louis, live your truth, bruh. This is not what he wants to be this is not how he wants to live but he keeps doing it trying to people please or vampire please i guess and i guess it works out for him because he seems pretty happy with armand but i don't think he's really happy with armand either to be honest but i don't think for him being with armand is as stressful and annoying as it was with being with claudia and lestat anyway let me know what you guys think about this episode do you think louis is lost in the sauce do you think he doesn't know who he is or do you agree with me that he does know who he is he's just too weak to live up to who he wants to be anyway until next time let's chat friends